Hey there guys, Wolf Team 2008 here, and in this video I'm going to talk about a piece of software called Smart Defrag 2, I think it is called, because my mind is now losing me. It is Smart Defrag 2. So, let's cut to the chase. This is the fifth time I am having to start recording this video because I keep fluffing it up. It's not one of my best days. It was my birthday yesterday, so I'm feeling a little bit old today. Right, basically, Smart Defrag 2 is a disk defragment utilization piece of software, and it can be used as a replacement for Windows built in generic disk defragmenter. Um, personally, I feel that this piece of software is a lot more capable and functional than the built in one. With this, we can set it to do a automatic defrag a defrag on boot so before you even get to the os we utilize this piece of software and it does a boot time defrag and it can also be set to shut down on completion of a normal defrag of course this will also analyze the disk as well we have multiple volumes that we can choose to add so let's basically get in there and have a look at it as you can see, my web browser is already open due to my fluff up at trying to remember a piece of software, which is not very professional, I will admit. So we need to go to www.iorbit.com forward slash iorbit smart defrag. That's all together in one word dot php. This link will be in the video description as well in the crotch bar below if you are watching on a desktop or laptop. If you are watching on a mobile device or an embedded player on an external website other than YouTube, it may look a bit different and I do apologise for that. Right, so let's basically get the tool downloaded. I'm using Google Chrome. Um, it's version 2.7 at time of recording, which is the 3rd of May 2013. Its file size is 4.74 megabytes. Um, I've already downloaded this, so I'm not going to, but you just click download. It will uh, redirect you to majorgeeks.com, and you can choose one of the following download location links. This says it is compatible with Windows XP, Vista, which nobody uses, Windows 7, and Windows 8. So, once you have downloaded your software, we shall get right onto it. So we want to go to the location where your download is. Mine is in my folder aptly named Downloads. So we are looking for this defrag setup.exe. We need to double click it and run. Any security options or user account control settings need to be accepted. We can close down the file location. And now we have the installer. So we have the terms and conditions which you may or may not want to read at your own leisure where it's not the terms and conditions i do apologize it is the eulet the end user license agreement so we need to accept this in order to be able to use the software this may confuse some people in order to just get the smart defrag 2 software we need to click on decline if we do not click on decline then we will get this additional toolbar which personally I don't want to use and I can imagine a lot of people out there don't want to use either so I'm going to click decline here is my file directory where the piece of software is going to end up it says it's going to take at least 16.4 megabytes of space and I want to have a desktop icon created I don't want to have it bookmarked though, so let's just run the installer. And I don't want this, so you can press skip if you want to accept it. This is another piece of software from iOrbit. Go have a look on their website. But if you do want it, accept it, but do a standard install, not a silent one, so you can keep an eye on it. So I'm going to skip that and as you can see it's finished the installation. This is where we get to uh, configure it. There's two skins, default look, 
which is the black one or a white look. Personally, I feel the uh, default looks a lot more sleek. And then we have our languages. It supports a wide range of languages, so you can choose your own. Mine is English, and I want to start it now. So I'm just going to move this shortcut over to here. So as you can see, my volume is my C drive, and I just want to do a quick analysis scan of it. So at the top here, it's saying percentage of analysis, and it's saying at the bottom what it is analyzing currently and how many fragments it has found. Now, as you can see, there's different colored blocks appearing on this graph here. A gray one is free space, a blue one is a thank you for interrupting me report the blue one is a rarely used file green one is frequently used purple is a directory mft would be yellow which we have one of those there unremovable these are basically files and options that are already in use by the operating system so they can't be touched at this moment in time which is why we would do a boot time defrag fragmented so the fragmented files and then moving is this pale blue which I have none of them on there so now that we have the analysis done it gives us a report and it says that 0.29% of my drive is defragged or is fragmented sorry so that's fine for now what we need to do is go into the settings so here we have our settings we can set it to a uh, defragment when the fragment seed one percent which is a good option so you're not defragging all the time because the more and more you defragment your hard drive it wears the discs down because the the fragment actually takes place by um, shaving off tiny portions of the disks on the hard drive but these disks last quite a long time but it's just to basically get the maximum output from them right so this is the general settings I'm happy with all of these apart from this one I don't want the program to start up automatically so let's check automatic defrag you can uh, set the program to start an auto defrag when the system has been idle for a select number of minutes and you can also choose to pause it when it uses resources or when other programs are using resources that exceeds 60% or of course this can be slided when the option is lit up but I'm just gonna leave that alone for now this is the one I'm interested in a schedule defrag so mine is on and the action I want is a full defragmentation of my C drive and we can configure a schedule it can either be every day week or month I'm choosing monthly and of course you choose the date the date so 1 through the 31 or 30 of the month and then the start time I'm choosing mine late at night when I know that it's going to be the end of my computer usage for the day so that it does not get interrupted by any other programs we have two options here as well if the top box is checked it will not start the task if the computer is running on battery mode only and if battery mode begins it will stop the task if it is currently running so I'm keeping those both unchecked so I'm happy with the scheduling I will now want to look at the boot time defrag so we have four options we can do it as a only next boot so the next time my computer restarts it will do a boot time defrag 
the everyday first boot so throughout the calendar week every time you switch on your system for the first time during that day you will do a boot time defrag or you can set it to every boot so every time it restarts or you shut down and then turn it on again it will do a defrag then or you can set it to do every seven days on first boot or of course you can slide it right up to a month but I think seven days is quite appropriate so I'm happy with that now this next option is to exclude files folders and subfolders from not being analyzed or defragged but it's best that you get everything checked over and user interface this is change the level of transparency as you can see in the background programs faded now it's coming back to solid I can change it the colors if you have a color impairment and we can change the language in here as well so I'm happy with all of these if you do change them and you want to go back to the original settings click recommended right so this is our report it's absolutely fine at the moment this is also good as well because we get a CPU usage and how much of our hard drive is being used at any given time so it says automatic defrag is not activated on this volume because I don't want it to go through this yet boot time defrag is turned on so it will check all of these on boot which is pretty good to be fair so that everything gets checked and we can also do it to check removable devices so I'm just going to plug in my USB now depending on how my laptop cooperates it's pretty good it's now showed up so I'm just going to click state and analyze And as you can see there are a fair few red chunks on this it's saying it's a 0.32 percent defragmentation but there's no need to defrag at the moment but just for clarity I'm going to show you we have different options here for the defrag we can do a defrag only or a fast or full optimize so I'm just going to do a defrag only and show you how it's going to go through it. This is on my C drive by the way. As you can see, when it is defragging, that little blue is coming up for moving. Because it is reallocating all of the space and it flashes around like blinking lights the idea it is the less red there is the better it is this is good and this is good as well Now, bearing in mind that I am recording this as well, so it will not be as effective as it would be if nothing else was running in the background. So once this is done, I will show you a quicker defrag with my USB, hopefully. Now, let's get into my capture so that's why it was a bit slow there as you can see the amount of red tiles have completely gone down
and I am now getting a large quantity of green. It's very nice. Something else as well, you can also customize these colors by left clicking on them. You can have your own color palettes and you can define your custom colors as well using the color selector tool. But I'm just going to keep these as the generic ones. But if I were to change it, say this one to a pink, click OK, go back to state. I can change it to go back to the factory settings. So the amount of green on here now is pretty good. I'm happy with that. Okay, so it appears that my USB is wanting to take a large amount of time doing this for some unbeknown reason. I suspect it is because I'm recording. And I've also looked at the video time and I realised this is quite longer than I wanted it to be. So I'm going to end the video now. My name is WolfTM2008. Thank you for watching this video. If you did like it, please give it a like. Also comment if you want any further help with this or you want me to do other tutorials on pieces of software or you just want a video idea doing. Please consider going over to my Facebook page as well. The URL will be in the video description as well as on the video end card as well with my copyright notice. It really does mean a lot to me that you guys are watching my videos, so thank you very much. And I guess I will see you in the next video. Until next time, guys, bye-bye.